A fake love in this instance is better than no love at all. When you are emotionally starving, breadcrumbs will satiate you. I do not really like this progression, I'm gonna be honest with you. Hi everyone, welcome to this video. On my channel, I analyze song lyrics very in depth through the lens of literary analysis. I look at things like diction, connotation, metaphors, etc. to try to decipher the song meaning. Today we're gonna be analyzing the song Nobody by Mitski. This is from her album, Be the Cowboy. I will make sure to link my Mitski playlist so far. I actually think this is only the third Mitski song I've done so far, but there's more to come. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button if you enjoy this video. And let's get started. Here are a list of literary terms I may refer to throughout this video. And as a reminder, everything I discuss is just my own personal opinion. I always love hearing what you think down below in the comments. This song title is specific, but also ambiguous. It gives off a isolated connotation. It brings forth a feeling of loneliness to me. It feels a little bit somber, a little bit sad. However, if you had not heard this song before, you wouldn't really know what nobody is referring to. You have to listen to the song to get the context. I do appreciate that this song title is literal. I've talked about this so many times in my videos. When something is very literal and straightforward, I do not view that as the absence of emotion. I interpret that as the presence of a lot of emotion previously. It's after you have felt the feels, after you have wallowed, eaten ice cream, watched all of the Gilmore Girl episodes, only the ones with Jess, obviously, hashtag team Jess. After you've done all those things, you sober up emotionally and you're able to recognize what you're feeling. That is what I think about when I see literal lyrics. You're emotionally sober. Verse one. <laughs> first line is very direct, it's very concise. Again, it's to me suggestive of being in an emotionally sober state after you have felt all of your feelings. This doesn't mean that your feelings are resolved, but you're in a state where you can recognize them and verbalize them. I find it interesting that the statement, I'm so lonely, is at the very beginning of this song. The protagonist of this song is not easing us into this at all. They are really telling us how they feel. So I open the window. I really like how the protagonist is taking an action. They're being proactive. They're doing something about the fact that they're lonely. To me, that is a good sign. I want to talk about the window. This could just be a literal thing, right? People sometimes do open the window to hear the vibes of the outside world. That's something that people do. I want to talk about the possible metaphorical nature of the window. A window is not meant for leaving and entering the building. Usually it lets light in, which is positive. It can also let air in if you open the windows, but a door is what allows you to actually go into the outside world and to have guests as well. So ideally, if we want the most positive situation, I would think about the protagonist opening the door to walk outside themselves or to open it to welcome a friend inside you know, someone from the outside coming in. I think that would be more positive. However, I still view this line as pretty positive because the protagonist still is able to access the outside world. They're able to open a window. It's not the biggest opening. It's not the most direct contact they can have with the outside world, but it's something. And to me, that's a good sign. Then we have repetition of the lyric to hear sounds of people. I always talk about how repetition signifies significance. I think it's very important when certain words or phrases are repeated in a song, especially when it's not the song title. The last two lines here really connote a feeling of intense loneliness because the protagonist doesn't even want to see people. She wants to hear them. She wants to be adjacent to people living. When you think about a window being open in like a busy city, you hear the bustling of crowds, you hear people going about their day. They could be running their errands or they could be doing something more fun like hanging out with their friends, laughing, giggling. But you hear the sounds of life. It's lively, right? Even if you open the window in a suburb, you hear kids playing outside, you may hear lawnmowers, you hear indications of lives being lived. And that's very beautiful. But the fact that the protagonist is craving just hearing that to me is pretty sad. It's kind of heartbreaking. It showcases how lonely this protagonist is feeling, that they are okay with merely hearing life being lived. The protagonist doesn't even say they want to see life being lived. 
Just the mere sound of it is comforting to our protagonist. So verse one gives us context about what this protagonist is feeling. I like that they're proactive and they're able to open the window and have access to the outside world. However, we do get an indication of how deprived the protagonist feels in a social sense. With the last two lyrics, just being adjacent to the sounds of living, it shows that you would take social breadcrumbs, right? Breadcrumbs would be enough to satiate your hunger. Verse two. Venus is a second planet from the sun and is named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty. In astrology, each planet is representative of specific things. I'm not an expert in astrology. This is very general information I'm providing. There's a lot of nuances, so keep that in mind. But very generally speaking, within astrology, Venus is the planet that represents love, romance, beauty, pleasure, etc. That's a little bit of context on why Mitski is referring to Venus as the planet of love. You wouldn't expect Venus, the planet that is symbolizing love, to even be able of suffering destruction. You would think that it is always going to be in harmony. When we have a symbol of something being destroyed, that's when we know that things are not okay. If not even the thing that symbolizes love can remain intact, then does love even exist? The fact that Venus can be destroyed diminishes the value of love. It could make you feel like love is a sham. It makes you question things. Now let's talk about the other topic in this verse, global warming. I want to state that I know this topic is often politicized and my channel is not a political channel. I'm just here to talk about words and metaphors and imagery, but I do find it important to provide context about lyrics so we can try to understand more about where the artist is coming from. The definition of global warming is a gradual increase in the overall temperature of the Earth's atmosphere, generally attributed to the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is a process that occurs when gases in the Earth's atmosphere trap the sun's heat. To understand this, it's helpful to think about an actual greenhouse where plants are housed. The glass of a greenhouse is what helps trap heat. So we can think about these greenhouse gases acting like the glass walls of a greenhouse. They trap heat in the Earth's atmosphere. The greenhouse effect is not inherently bad. As stated here, greenhouse gases are crucial at keeping our planet at a suitable temperature for life. Without the natural greenhouse effect, the temperatures of the earth would be far too cold. The issue is that on earth, human activities are changing the natural greenhouse. Some greenhouse gases do come from natural sources. However, since the Industrial Revolution of the late 1700s and early 1800s, people have been releasing larger quantities of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. According to this article from the EPA, scientists have been looking at Earth's climate and analyzing whether the changes in climate are due to natural processes or human activities. And while natural causes do exist for the warming of Earth's climate, it states here that it is extremely likely greater than 95% likely, that human activities have been the dominant cause of global warming. It's been stated that it is, quote, unequivocal that human influence has warmed the atmosphere, ocean, and land. I will be linking the articles I looked at down below in the description if you would like to read further. Please keep in mind I'm not providing a lot of depth to this explanation. I'm just providing enough context so we can try to understand what Mitski may be referring to, so I definitely encourage you to read further if you're interested in this topic. This context, the fact that scientists have stated global warming has increased due to human activities, is important to keep in mind when looking at the lyrics of this song. When we look at the second half of verse 2, it says, Did its people want too much? There's a repetition of that lyric, which to me makes it more significant. The citizens of the planet of Venus contributed to its destruction. To me, the protagonist of this song is coming from a place where they believe that people are selfish and they would rather enjoy something now or make something easier for themselves in the moment and not think about the long-term consequences it may have. The fact that this planet of love was destroyed by something that its citizens contributed to is significant. The protagonist isn't saying that love by itself was destroyed, but it was destroyed due to what the protagonist perceives as selfishness. 
This is a more macro viewpoint on the concept of love. If we are to kind of pull this back a little bit and apply it to the protagonist's personal life, perhaps the protagonist is saying the people they've come across aren't able to give and receive love in an appropriate way. They want too much for themselves. They want a temporary thrill right now and they don't want anything positive for the long term. That's one way to think about it. I feel like the protagonist is viewing her own internal conflict and her own internal thoughts through a more macro lens, connecting it to something that is in existence in the outside world, right? On a global scale. This really makes the feelings the protagonist is having about love seem more intense and more catastrophic. There's lots of ways you can extrapolate this out. There's lots of ways you can interpret this. I would really be interested to hear what your take is, but that's how I'm kind of thinking about it right now. Verse three. We don't know exactly who your is referring to. It is possible that the protagonist is confiding in someone. I personally do not think that's the case. I think the protagonist is having a sort of internal monologue. I would love to know what you think, so make sure to comment it down below. The fact that the protagonist does not want anyone's pity shows that they are not looking for validation of how they feel. They know how they feel, and they also don't care if anyone believes them or understands them. They are to the point where like validation doesn't matter. They just need a solution, right? They are at their wits end emotionally. They needed a solution like yesterday. There's only so much a person can take. Being lonely and feeling lonely can be very, very damaging, not even in an emotional sense, but also in a psychological sense. If it goes on long enough, it's not something to take lightly. There is a sense of desperation to get out of the situation, but I do not interpret this like feeling of desperation as a weakness. I just think about it as being indicative of the depth of pain this protagonist is in and how like emotionally dangerous or even psychologically dangerous the situation is getting. The word near is kind of heartbreaking. This protagonist does crave proximity to life being lived. We learned that in the first verse, but the word near doesn't mean next to, right? It just means being like kind of close to. They don't even say they want someone to sit directly next to them, someone to talk to them, someone to connect with. They just want to like see someone somewhere, like within their line of sight. Again, they're able to be satiated by breadcrumbs right now. The word near is significant to me. It really indicates how deeply not okay the protagonist is right now. Guess I'm a coward. A coward is someone who lacks courage. So what would the protagonist be lacking in courage about? This depends. You can interpret it in a lot of different ways. For me, I think the protagonist maybe thinks that they're a coward in the sense that they're not going outside. Do you know what I mean? They're opening a window, not a door. Maybe they think they can do more, but they don't feel like they can, or maybe they're not feeling well enough to do that. When you are very sad or very lonely, it can affect, like I said, your body. So maybe they just literally are too sad to go out and actually meet people. And maybe that's why they are calling themselves a coward. I just want to feel all right. Again, the word all right has a similar connotation to the word near, in my opinion, in the sense that they're both kind of like the bare minimum. It's something that's like satisfactory, but not especially good. So again, they are satiating themselves with breadcrumbs. This shows the depth of their emotional or psychological starvation. And I know no one will save me. This protagonist has awareness. They are aware of their situation. They don't have unrealistic expectations. They're honest about their reality, which, you know, is positive. That's good. They're not in a delusional state. I just want someone to kiss. Give me one good honest kiss. So perhaps their loneliness is not as much platonic as it is romantic. They really want a sort of romantic intimacy with someone. This is very sad, but I am glad that the protagonist is able to say this because before this, they were only asking for being close to people, but still in a far way with the opening of the window, with having somebody near them. But now they're talking more about like a more tangible form of intimacy, which I think is positive that they're acknowledging that, but it's still just very heartbreaking to hear about. I want to talk about the phrase good honest kiss. The word good brings forth a feeling of stability, which is good right? <laughs> the word good is good. The word good is a very stable word, which I think is positive. Stability is a pretty positive thing in my opinion. I don't really view stability as boring. I know some people might. I view stability as healthy. So this protagonist wants a true kiss, a stable kiss. They also want an honest kiss, something that's pure, something that's real. 
right? They want something real and healthy. Is that too much to ask for? The last line has repetition of the word all right. I do not like that word. It makes me very sad because again, it's kind of like the bare minimum. It's like the least positive, positive word. <laughs> Chorus is repetition of the word nobody. I know that nobody is the title of this song, so it's going to be present all throughout the song. However, I do think that this repetition is significant. I kind of view nobody as being something that the protagonist is like thinking in their mind, kind of like an intrusive thought. It just keeps coming up. They're kind of walking around like their house or their apartment. And they're just like nobody, nobody. There's nobody here. There's nobody to call. I feel like that's kind of like the intense mental state they might be at at some points. That's why I think it's repeated. I view every single repetition of nobody as kind of getting more intense emotionally for the protagonist. I view the protagonist kind of going on a thought spiral, like an emotional spiral as well, and just being in a very intense emotional state. In addition to the emotions increasing with each repetition, I also view desperation increasing as well. I feel like the protagonist is becoming more and more desperate for a solution to their feeling of loneliness. Verse 4. <laughs> repetition yet again. When we think about the words big and small, there are many, many ways to interpret it. We can think about this more literal, like in size, maybe like weight. The protagonist is saying, even though I've been like very skinny and you know, maybe I put on weight, no one wants her. So that's a more physical sort of interpretation. I am interpreting this more metaphorical. If you watch my videos, you know that I have a natural inclination to view things pretty metaphorically. So for me, when I see the words big and small, I think about kind of like self-esteem a little bit. If you feel big, you feel confident. I'm not saying that you have a big ego, I want to clarify, when you feel big, I think you feel kind of confident, you have your shoulders back, you're walking slowly but with purpose, you have like your hater blockers on. I'm sorry I said that, but like you do, right? You don't really care about other people's opinions as much, people's words don't affect you, you feel big, but in a positive way. And if you feel small, you feel weak, you may feel emotionally weak, maybe your self-esteem or self-worth is not where it's supposed to be. So that's how I am personally thinking about the words big and small. I would love to know what you think, so make sure to comment it down below. So in that case, the protagonist is saying, even when I feel good about myself, even when I am confident, feeling big, no one wants to be with them. And when they feel weak, no one wants to be with them. This verse is in parallel to the second half of verse three where it talks about one good honest kiss i do not really like this progression i'm gonna be honest with you i view one good honest kiss as much more positive and more pure than one good movie kiss because movies are not real the people in movies are actors they're not really in love with each other a movie is produced it's written it's picture perfect and i understand that the protagonist may want a picture perfect movie kiss and that's valid that's cute who doesn't so to me I don't view that progression in a positive way. It makes me a little bit concerned. Maybe the protagonist's standards for what they want are kind of decreasing a little bit. Maybe they're becoming more desperate in finding a solution to their loneliness. Even if the kiss is fake and produced and is in the context of studio lighting, they'll take it. It's another version of breadcrumbs that I talked about earlier. A fake love in this instance is better than no love at all. When you are emotionally starving, breadcrumbs will satiate you, whether you're aware of it or not. Then we have repetition of the chorus and then the outro says, talk about the word no versus the word nobody. The word no is in fact a part of the word nobody. No is the last word of this song. I view it as a very somber sort of acceptance by the protagonist. They've gone through all of these emotions. They've thought all of these not so fun thoughts. I think they've kind of come down from that and then they're like, no, as in they're kind of accepting their situation a little bit. It's definitely not a happy thing in my opinion. It is a more stable place. I think the, that they're landing on a more stable sort of emotional ground at the end of this song, which is acceptance of their current situation. I don't think that means that they're going to accept it for the entirety of their life, but perhaps in that difficult moment that they're having, they're like, no, this is just just what it is. There's, there's nothing here. You can also look at this the other way as them coming to a gentle resolve and a gentle conclusion, gentle yet firm conclusion 
that they will no longer accept this context for themselves, that they want to change it. They keep telling themselves that there's nobody, so they're kind of reinforcing that idea. And maybe at the end they're like, no. As in, no, I'm no longer going to allow myself to repeat this over and over again. I'm not going to allow myself to have this very intense thought spiral anymore, right? They could be stopping themselves and saying that enough is enough. They could be coming to that conclusion, and I think that's possible because this protagonist has shown us multiple times throughout this song that they have awareness and that they're not delusional. So I do want to think that they're coming to that place where they're like, enough is enough. I'm gonna find a positive solution to this. I'm gonna put myself out there and also learn how to be okay with being alone, learn how to be content with being by myself. I do wanna know what you think down below in the comments. Um, I would love to know how you interpret the last word, the word no. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you feel inclined, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.